People, some of these TikTok hacks completely blew my mind and others, not so much. I got on my account and yes, I have a TikTok account in case you're not hanging out with me over there, come on over. And I just started searching DIY tips and hacks, DIY craft hacks, and I found a bunch of good things to try. So I started rummaging through the house, collecting all the things that I possibly could to give these hacks a really good go. Cause y'all know I'm going to make sure. <laughs> that we're giving these a good go. And the first one we're gonna try, of course it had to be this one, cling wrap decoupage. I was, woo, when I seen this. We're gonna need a piece of wood, and I picked this up in a pack from Walmart, and a napkin. Make sure you get those sneaky little layers off behind there, cause you only want the top of the napkin. You can use whatever tips or hacks you want to accomplish that, just make sure you have the top layer. I love that sound. The hack on TikTok used actual cling wrap. Now I didn't have any of that on hand. I had the generic form, the great value plastic wrap. And I figured, you know what? In hindsight, I'm just helping you guys save pennies if this works. So we are going to just kind of apply our plastic wrap. There is nothing on this wood. It is just the wood. And I'm cutting the plastic wrap down to size and making sure it's nice and flat. And then we're taking the little napkin and making sure that's nice and flat on top of it. We're not putting anything else on there. If you have parchment paper, use that. I did not. So I am using this wax paper and I have done this before. I'm no stranger to the iron on method. Next, I am slowly taking this iron and going over the entire piece, making sure that I keep my hand on the one section so it stays flat. You have no idea how skeptical I was this whole situation i am a mod podge lover so i was like there is no way this is going to work and just like the iron on method i like to make sure the ends are gone over very very well because if they're not it can cause problems when you're trying to get the extra bits off the ends so i went over this several times i probably ironed this for a good two to three minutes this is going to be extremely hot so when you move that paper please just be careful before you go grabbing anything <laughs> i let it cool for about a minute and then look at that i could not believe that this was attached on here look at me just holding up the piece of wood with the paper and <laughs> the cling wrap i was completely shocked so i'm like all right okay let's try the sandpaper here so i grabbed me an 80 grit piece of sandpaper which is a very coarse piece of sandpaper just because i wanted to see if this was going to cause any separation between the wood the napkin and the cling wrap and it did not this was flawless it is by far one of the smoothest decoupage pieces i have ever done i will absolutely be using this going forward not all the time i got a couple things i want to test with this might have to do a tutorial tuesday on it but next hack we are going to do is a packing tape hack as simple as this hack is it absolutely blew my mind I am constantly packing things for my business and I am always stressed whenever I lose the end of the tape. I'm like, damn it. And then I've got to go find it. Well, you don't have to go find it. You can just press the other end of the tape like this against it and then feed it through until you find it. And look at that. It pops right up. I could not believe I have went all this time and did not know this did you guys know this how many of you knew this and was holding out on me i don't appreciate that you're supposed to be my people and this one how many of you knew about this glue and glue sticks hack because i didn't you're gonna need your glue gun i know all you use a glue gun every single one of you is watching right now and we use glue sticks right mostly and this is how i refill mine and then i hold it like this until it finally grabs you know what i mean until that glue comes out enough i'm pushing the back end well, apparently you don't have to. You can just squeeze some glue on here or like melt the glue on here and then you press it in the back of the glue stick that is almost completely gone in your glue gun and it stays. And you don't have to push it or keep moving it because it keeps falling out. It just stays. And look how amazing it works without me having to push on the back of it. Look at that. Just push in push in look at that i'm pulling it it's not coming out some of you were holding out on me on this one too but don't worry i got your back for those of you that didn't know i love you and we are learning this together i love this one 
People, I had red flags popping up all over the place about this one and I just had to do it. The hack mostly shows people using plain black words or plain black labels or plain black pictures. This is one of my printable downloads off my website that I had laying around from fall and I thought if it can work with plain black, it should work with actual color. So the idea is to take packing tape and put it over your image and then it's supposed to, the color is supposed to transfer onto the packing tape. Then we're going to kind of treat this like a reverse decoupage. If you have never done that before, it is where you apply it to a surface and then you use water to rub off the paper and this is your desired result. As you can see here in one of my previous DIYs, it's absolutely stunning. However, the packing tape was not working with me and then crusty bits were getting stuck in the packing tape. I don't know where they were coming from. So I had to keep dealing with that. And then for whatever reason, the little piece of paper kept flopping up while I'm trying to get this straight on here. And then once I did get it on here, I didn't rub two brain cells together thinking this was gonna be a lot more difficult to get off the table because it's packing tape. It's not regular plain old tape gonna be really stuck on here so I started ripping <laughs> and I'm like seriously why why I had to mute the rest of that right there because I'm trying to keep the channel a little pg-13 but as you can imagine <laughs> it was no longer pg-13 if you have an easier way of attaching your packing tape onto a piece of paper with a printed image do you okay this was my process and of course I decided to just lay it back down on the table <laughs> to and stick it on the table oh lord you should y'all I was having a time with this one I cut all the extra excess of the tape from around the paper with the image and now it's time to bring in the bowl of water and before i get a bunch of comments it is not cold it is not hot it is just lukewarm that is it. it is like room temperature i stuck this sucker in there and let it sit for about a minute then came the fun part if you have carpal tunnel do not take this task on lightly let me tell you something my fingers were cramping up so bad and I've rubbed a lot of paper off of a lot of things doing reverse <laughs> decoupaging. This, this was interesting. And as I'm going through the rubbing process and dunking it back in, and yes, the paper is coming off like it normally would, I noticed that the packing tape was not sticky at all. Now, I watched several different TikToks about this, and some of them... The piece of paper just slid right off the packing tape and then the image was kind of imprinted lightly in other ones people had to completely you know rub the back of the paper off and there was still an image printed lightly on the packing tape for whatever reason i did not get this result it didn't matter how much i rubbed i mean sure there's an image there but all the paper didn't come off even after i spent about 15 minutes rubbing the back of this trying to get it off and it's not sticky at all. So I'm not gonna be able to restick this anywhere to make a DIY sticker. It just didn't yield good results for me. Out of all the hacks we are trying today, this is the one I was most excited to give a go. I'm using just this little cutting piece and a cuisine art knife, okay? Just a nice cuisine art knife. Nothing too fancy schmancy, okay? And we're bringing in a great value bag. Just a baggie, okay? A little baggie. The idea behind this is you're supposed to be able to slice this sucker right down the middle and you get two bags. Okay, now, first of all, my bag did not slice right down the middle precisely. So I was like, oh, well, I screwed that up. You know what I mean? So I thought maybe it's the knife. It's not sharp enough, even though these are pretty new. Like, I've maybe used that knife five times and it didn't cut through that bag, I was a little concerned. So I'm like, let's heat it up. <laughs> so I'm over here with the heat gun and I'm like, we're gonna warm this sucker up. I got another bag. Cause you guys know if I'm gonna be trying reviewing something, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> we're gonna keep at this. I'm not just gonna like hurry up and figure out how to do it. And then, oh, it's all pretty. Like we're doing this shit <laughs> and we're gonna see if we can make it work. First of all, I do a lot of DIYs and I got a lot of stuff. So if I can get two bags for one to be able to store things, I'm all about it. So I was given this hack a good once over. So I went and grabbed this knife. 
Okay. I don't even know what the hell this knife is for. It's in my cabinet. I've maybe used this two times because I don't even know what to cut with it. Do you know what to cut with it? Let me know in the comments because I sure didn't. So it just sits there. I'm like, I know this sucker is sharp. However, I was still not having a good time cutting this bag. And at the end of the day, when I did double check the slice, because I did get most of the bag that time through, it was still two pieces and they had gaping holes in there. Wes did say that he thinks that you would need a one good slice with a really sharp knife. And I'm like, in my opinion, that's not really a hack. If I have to go out and buy special tools to be able to accomplish this, a regular knife should be able to turn this one bag into two. Let me know in the comments how you feel about that. When I seen these hacks, I was like, we're doing it because I get talked to all the time about using alcohol and hand sanitizer to clean my crusty bit paintbrushes. And the TikTokers look like they were having one easy time. So I'm like, we're going to get two bowls. We're going to label them. So we have an H for the hand sanitizer and an A for the alcohol. I then poured a bunch of alcohol in this one. And the hand sanitizer, I was a little sparing because this stuff's kind of expensive and it's my favorite and I didn't want to use it all, okay? But I did decide that because this was all the Krusty Bit paintbrushes I have, just to let y'all know, I recently cleaned, okay, and went through and reorganized everything. I kept my favorite Krusty Bit brushes and people will take a look at these because they are seriously crusty, okay? There is months of dried up, ridiculousness in these brushes okay I wasn't holding back for this hack I'm like if we're doing it we're doing it and they're gonna get some of my worst contestants okay these are also my last ones that I had because like I said I had cleaned so I dabbed the suckers around in the products for a little bit okay a good minute I was like pop 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 tap -ity, tap 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 and I did the same thing for both okay i did not discriminate they both got the same treatments and then i let these sit for one full hour one full hour after i smooshed them all around in their bowls to make sure that these products got these crusty bit paintbrushes all clean like i have been told in the comments by at least 100 people using one or the other and like I have seen in these TikTok hacks. But as you can see here, I don't know about this. So I took both of the paint brushes and went to the sink with scalding hot water and I used seventh generation dish soap and I gave them both a really good clean and this was the result. If I had to pick one hack over the other, it would be the hand sanitizer hands down. It definitely seemed like the paint was still flicking off versus the one that was in the alcohol. There was some really hard spots in that brush still that I think would have taken us several more hours worth of soaking in the alcohol before it started to come apart. I think the hand sanitizer, one more dunk, and we would have probably been good. I was really intrigued to get to this hack. For the hack, what they did is they took some glue and they just kind of squirted it onto one of these little mats and let the little glue bit dry. And I'm like, okay, well, that's fine and all, but I think it might be a little bit easier if we try my way and just use some miter shears <laughs> and cut little circle pieces off, right? I mean, it's still the same concept. We got little glue bits from the glue gun that are already cooked or these, you know, either way, there's still little circle glue bits, right? Plus you can make these things as thick as you want and they look just like this, easy storage, you know what I mean? And you get to avoid this. This was a pain. This was so difficult trying to get, I don't know why. I mean, normally if I'm gluing anything together, the glue, it will just fall right apart, but not today, okay? Today I had to scrape these suckers off with a little baby spatula, a little cricket tool. And for the sake of our demonstration, I'm only doing one because I was not struggling to get the other one off. But so you can see a side-by-side -side comparison, they're roughly the same exact size. The idea behind the hack is to be able to take the little glue bits and put them on your DIY projects. Oh. Be mindful though, because if you're not pointing your heat gun directly down on them, they will go flying 
off the back of your project so you've been warned but the idea is to be able to take the little bits put them on there and then heat them up so this way you don't have strings like going everywhere so i thought this was really really cool when i seen it and i was like this actually would be nice to have a bunch of little glue bits over in the corner just grab a couple heat them on up and then plop it on down and then and then I realized you don't have any real control over the size of this because once you smush this down as opposed to applying the hot glue directly onto it there is so much extra hot glue on here and then the, I had strings anyway I was getting string upon string and I was like okay well I guess you gotta be perfect with the placement on this hack it's a really cool concept but I don't think I'm gonna revisit this one People, I thought this hack was absolutely awesome and I love that it was super flipping easy. Now, you're going to need a photo frame. Any frame will do and you can get any size for this as well. So that allows a lot of space for creativity. I had this one from Christmas Tree Shops. You could use one from Dollar Tree, of course. You're going to want to take the glass piece out and then you're going to want to make sure you're cleaning the glass off. I'm just using alcohol here, some rubbing alcohol and cleaning off both sides. Next, pick out your paint colors. Either use chalk paint or a paint that is meant for glass. If you use acrylic paint, it is not gonna stick well. Would not recommend that, unless you're mixing it with a chalk paint. <laughs> for my paint colors, I decided to go with a moss green and a white, and you can paint this glass however you want. You could do it half and half. The whole point of this is a DIY customized dry erase board. So paint it however you want draw a little image on here. I just decided to kind of create a little bit of an ombre look. And once it was dry, I flipped it down and put it on a white piece of paper. And then I cleaned off the side that did not have the paint on it before I went to use it for the dry erase part. Carefully reinsert and make sure it is secure. And then you're gonna be ready to use this sucker. And I don't know what happened to my little black dry erase marker. Yes, I do, my kit. My kit is what happened to it because it was all dried out and left alone. So we're using this little red one. It's getting the job done, right? It's getting the job done. So when you're done with your saying that you put on here, just wipe it off like you normally would and then write another saying on here. This hack was definitely one of my favorite to do. Let me know in the comments below if you have made one of these of your own. I came across this hack on TikTok, but the creator of the hack is a big old YouTuber named She's So Crafty. Lanterns are huge in the DIY community. I think they get made more than anything else. So when I seen that she had created a way to be able to use this little Dollar Tree piece pretty much in any glass item any glass item that that bulb piece will fit into just by frosting the glass i was like we have got to do this so for my version i'm using this little mason jar piece because as you can see the little bulb fits in there perfectly and it only took about an hour for this spray paint to dry her version was very sleek and modern and inspirational obviously mine i'm gonna turn little rustic here and grab us some sticks and some <laughs> wood flowers. I love this hack. I love the idea of being able to take that little Dollar Tree light and put it into any glass piece that it fits in and you have an instant lantern that will just give your house a little extra something. That's going to be it for these TikTok hacks. People let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed these and if you want to see more videos just like this one. As always, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today and until next time. Bye!